I was not looking these over very closely. Pause for semi truck. Backing up down my street. Don't these guys know this is a cul-de-sac? I cannot tell you how many times people drive down our street and they hit the end of the street and then they're like, oh crap, this street doesn't go through. And then they have to make a U-turn out in front of our house. Does no one know how to read a map anymore? My God. Anyway. Shake up a martini, pull up a chair, and let's go thrifting. This is Mid-Century Wasting. everyone welcome to mid-century wasted i am jamie thank you for joining me today we have a haul <laughs> i don't know why i'm talking like this but we have a haul today and i'm doing it towards the table as you can see because there's a lot of linens <laughs> if you haven't noticed and i think you'll be able to see them better if i sort of just hold them up here to the camera i might have to get a light We'll try it. We'll see what happens. Okay, so this is the haul from my last shopping video. And the shopping video took place at an estate sale here locally in Southern California. This one was actually in Costa Mesa. And it was a kind of smaller house. It may have been a condo. I think it was in like a condo community. But even though the house was a little bit smaller, I mean, it wasn't small by any means, but it was a little more modest, I guess. It was a smaller house, but it was also a newer house. It was a more recently built house than, say, the neighborhood I live in where... Houses were built in the 50s, 60s, 70s for the most part. This was a, a more modern house. And the person who had lived there had a good mix of vintage and new things. So there was a lot of sort of trying to filter through what was old and what was new. My theory is that the person living there may have been into antiquing. And I have a feeling a lot of this stuff was probably purchased at antique stores or vintage shops because there was a strong theme of of nautical items and things that had blues and pale greens and certain colors and in my experience if somebody has a lifelong collection in their home that was collected from straight from the 40s 50s 60s it tends to be kind of all over the place it doesn't have like a, a strong focus like this house tended to have so Anyway, that's my take on the background of the home. And the reason why I went to this particular sale is because they had tons and tons and tons of Pyrex and vintage kitchenware stuff in the pictures. And you know, that's right up my alley. That is my jam. So I went ahead and I went to this estate sale, but I did not get there early. I was not one of the first people in line or anything like that. So unfortunately, by the time I got there, every single piece of Pyrex was gone. Well, no, I take it back. There was a couple little Pyrex plates, but that's not really what I meant. And those are not very uncommon. So I left those behind. And they just weren't at the price point that I would have wanted them to be. Anyway, what I did not expect was the plethora of vintage linens that they had there. I was blown away. And as you could tell, if you watched the shopping video, I spent a good amount of time just digging through these piles and piles of linens. I'm sure I missed some stuff even. I know as I was editing back the shopping video, I noticed there was something on the floor that matched something that I got. And I was like, dang it, I missed one. <laughs> there was two of those at least, and I only got one, but you know, we'll talk about that when we get to it. So anyway, it was not a complete bust, even though the stuff that I originally went there to get was gone. I ended up getting quite a haul of things anyway. So I was, I don't know, pleasantly surprised or it, it made up for it anyway. Let's put it that way. So first let's talk about the stuff that's not linens. <laughs> let's get that stuff out of the way first. Let me move some of these over. I'll just pile them all up over here like so. Okay. So this is along the lines of something that I kind of intended to go there for. This is a 
Hazel Atlas. I think I said it may have been Anchor Hawking in the shopping video, but this is a Hazel Atlas coffee mug in this turquoise color that I love oh so much. And as you can see, it was $8, which is, you know, not the best price in the world for one of these. I haven't actually looked up what they retail for, but I bought this anyway just because there was so much of this stuff in the picture that I didn't get to experience and I just kind of wanted to buy something because this collection was so nice with all of the shakers and Pyrex and milk glass. I don't know. I wanted something. <laughs> And so I went ahead and I got this for myself because this is my color, this is what I collect, and I will use this. I will put this with my coffee mugs and drink out of it. And I didn't mind paying $8 for it for myself. So that's that. Oh, and it's in good condition too. I left that part out. And I'm sorry if the focus is being wackadoo right now. I am filming with a new camera and there's a learning curve. <laughs> So if it's going in and out of focus, just bear with me while I figure out how the heck to work this thing. So that's that. Next, I think you saw me pick up this. This is just a little, I don't know, cornucopia planter. I don't know what you actually call this. I usually call these cornucopias, but I don't know if that's right. But it's a little vintage pink planter. The pink is really nice. I don't know if it's completely picking up on the camera because again, like I said, new camera. I don't, might not have the white balance worked out totally perfect right now. It is marked, I think it says 130 USA. So I don't know who makes this. It wasn't priced. So I believe they gave this to me for a dollar as I was checking out, if I'm not mistaken. So sure, why not? And it's that, you know, really pretty pink color that people collect, unlike me who doesn't collect any pink stuff. The other stuff here, I don't think I was filming when I put it into my box. So I'll show you, it was kind of cramped. Like I said, the house was small-ish and it was a little tight in there. So there was lots of times where I had to stop filming and tuck my box underneath a table and try to maneuver around in there. So I didn't, I didn't film myself kitchen everything while I was shopping. So here's this vintage sifter. I thought this was really cute, especially with the red handle and this print on the side. As you can see, it was, if it'll focus, it was $4. I do not normally pick up stuff like this, so I don't know um, retail value of this just quite yet off the top of my head, but if there's enough profit to be made, I will be listing this on probably Etsy. Um, I'm giving Etsy another, another chance. <laughs> um, I was doing mostly eBay lately, but I think I'm going to give Etsy another chance for true vintage things. Um, and if there's no profit to be made, I like this. And I think because of the red and the green, this would look cute with uh, some fake poinsettias in it at Christmas time. Fake because... I kill everything and aren't poinsettias bad for animals? Aren't they poisonous for like cats or dogs? I don't remember, maybe not. But anyway, these look really cute when you put flowers in them. So that's what I would be doing with it if the resale value isn't there. In other words, if I'm not gonna make enough profit since I spent $4 on it. So we'll see about that. Next, in the office, which I don't think I showed. I found this Bahamas letters and bill holder. Um, I've seen these before. These were just, you know, souvenir pieces. They've got the little pockets in them, but I liked this one especially because, I mean, those are supposed to be flamingos. Isn't the Bahamas a place where you can go see like wild flamingos? I'm pretty sure it is. So because of that, I picked this up. And it's also kind of a trendy look right now. It's very boho. It's nautical because of the boat and palm trees and Bahamas whole just scene here. So, and that was $3 as you can see. Yeah, I thought that was kind of fun. This was also in the office and they gave this to me for free. Apparently books were free. How to take the fun out of golf. An expert tells how in 31 different ways. And Blake, my husband, is a golf coach. So when I see goofy golf-related things 
for cheap, I tend to pick them up just for his office, for his little collection of golf stuff. I haven't even opened this up yet, so let's see what's inside. I think it's just humorous, humorous little cartoons inside. Um, golf humor. No, no, I was there in the trap. You were four in the trap and six on the green. Four, four, don't forget the runt in the dunce cap is all mine. What the heck? I do not understand golf. I just, what? Anyway, <laughs> that was free. You're welcome, Blake. Enjoy your confusing golf book. Um, <laughs> so, so now, like always, here's the ephemera segment of my show. <laughs> Because apparently I can't go anywhere without getting loads of papers. I, I don't I don't know even what to do <laughs> with all the papers. Especially some of these things you'll see. I don't know. I just don't know. But I can't pass them up. So here we are. First of all, there's a stack of vintage magazines. And these were all a dollar each, which I think is an excellent deal. I tend to pick up vintage magazines if they're a dollar or less. Even if the magazine itself is in bad shape, you can always pull out really cool ads that are inside. Sometimes on Instagram, in my Instagram stories, I will sit down with a vintage magazine and flip through it and show pictures and videos of articles, but mostly ads that are inside. So if you follow me on Instagram, that's kind of a fun little thing that I do every now and then. And also, you know, you can resell vintage magazines. Sometimes people look for um, certain dates. This one is June 30th, 1964. And whether it be like somebody's birthday or a special date in somebody's life when their child was born or an anniversary or something, it's fun to buy a magazine and give it as a gift. That's something that I have done before. It's, um, if you don't know what to get somebody, <laughs> it's, it's a good gift. You get a special a magazine, an older magazine or a magazine that has a special date that is meaningful to somebody and you give it to them as a present. Especially if it's like a milestone birthday, you know, a 50th birthday or a 50th anniversary or something like that where you can get the magazine from that month or maybe even the exact day if it's like a look magazine or a time magazine where they have specific dates if this will ever focus. <laughs> so yeah. So anyway, here's look magazine. Like I said, 1964. This one's cut in the corner. So this is what I would consider a magazine to use for probably for just the graphics and ads that are on the inside. This one has something to do with Kennedy and it's from August 24th, 1965. Here's a Life magazine. And look, see, like I said, you can kind of tell if it'll focus. This has $2 written on it and probably a booth number. So I, I think this person did buy these at in an antique mall or an antique store. So, Life Magazine, this one is from June 14th, 1968. It's something to do with Robert Kennedy. This one, May 26th, 1972, Life Magazine. This is not the happiest news on the front. This one is January 30th, 1956. So this one's a little older. Anytime you see ones from the 50s, there's gonna be some fun ads inside of this one for sure. And this one, last one, March 7th, 1955. This one's talking about Buddhism. That might be interesting. The 1955 take on Buddhism. Here's an interesting little book. This was three dollars as you can see unfortunately they put the price tag on the book so i'm gonna have a time trying to get that off without causing any damage um i literally just grabbed this because of the graphics on the front i thought that would look really cute in a display if somebody's doing a nautical thing on the back it says if we can get there can we get there okay 1984 that's basically all i wanted to show you so it's not overly old um, and it's got some good graphics on the inside and I think each page is just its own little story but I don't know maybe it's all one story too I have not read it but even sitting this page open like this I, I just like the graphics so I picked that up too last of the ephemera I got 
all of these crate labels. And I am not super familiar with these. These are not something that I pick up often. They're something I see a lot, especially at the flea market, and I get the feeling that they're reproductions. So I don't know if these are reproductions. I don't know if maybe they're just super common and there's a million of them out there, but I get the feeling that when you see a ton of something, that means they're reproductions. So. This is something that I'm gonna have to kind of look into a little bit, but either way, even if they are reproductions, I got these for $3 each, which I don't think is a bad price for me, if I'm keeping them. If they have value to resell, then I'll resell them. But I love the graphics of these, and I would like to put these in my display cabinet behind like my Pyrex bowls and things, because I think just the graphics on them are really great. And they're California related, which is always something that I am looking for, being in California. These say Carpinteria, Santa Barbara County on them. So anyway, there is Sea Treat brand. I think this is my favorite one. I'm showing you my favorite first, because I love the porthole and then the cocktail on there too. I think that's great. Sea Breeze brand with the ocean and the fruit trees. Mariner brand, that's another good one with the salty sea captain. Grown by the sea. And then this one I really liked. It's a wintery one. Genuine firewood. Split oak and madrone logs. And this one is, um, maybe this is Bloomfield Farms, Santa Clara Valley since 1853. And then if you can see, oh, so, small at the bottom it says copyright 1978 so maybe it is um like 70s reproductions of these or maybe this is just from the 70s i have not a clue <laughs> either way it says copyright 1978 so i'm still in i would like to maybe get uh some sort of a frame for this or something and i could see this by the fireplace at christmas time maybe on the mantle Something like that. I think that's a cool kind of Christmassy scene. So anyway, those were all $3 each. Now, for the linen portion of the show. <laughs> so like I said, I just went absolutely bonkers on the linens. I was just had my box sitting down on the floor and I was flipping through stuff and just being like, whoop, 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 into the box. I did not closely inspect every single thing. Most of this stuff is at the bare minimum stained. May also have some little holes and rips and tears. I, I just don't know. So I just figured they'll give me a price. You know, it wasn't tagged or anything. I didn't know how much all of this was gonna cost. So I just loaded up the box and I thought they would probably just bundle it, which they sort of did. The guy ringing me up didn't know what to charge. So he asked another lady, she said they were 50 cents each. And he kind of did one of these as he was just sort of flipping through the box, like uh, two, four, six, $17. <laughs> so I got this whole pile over here of linens for $17, which I think is absolutely fine. I will try to soak some of them. Anything that's unsalvageable, maybe it can be used for crafting or if, you know, if the tablecloths have some little holes in it, I don't mind that at all because my kids are going to spill all over a tablecloth anyway. So I don't mind keeping the ones that are not in pristine condition for myself. So let's just quickly, as quick as I can, show you what I got. So this is a tablecloth, blue and green flowers. I don't really even know how big this is. Let me open it up real quick. That looks square. And it's got some stains, as you can see. I do try to get the stains out as much as I can and wash them, you know, obviously. But if it doesn't come out, it's not the end of the world to me. This one, I think, was one of the first ones I picked up where it made me realize there's some fun old things in here. <laughs> so this one has, you can see it's like a horse and buggy. And yeah, again, like a good amount of staining on this one. But it kind of looks like just dirty. So we'll see what happens to that one. I want to see how big this one is too. Yeah, this one looks a little bit more rectangular. I think this will fit my table perfectly. And it's just um, kind of sunny and fun. I think those were the only two tablecloths that I got. I sort of tried to sort these as I put them on the table. This I picked up, this is kind of funny. 
I, it's a tote bag and I picked it up because it said the pioneer woman on it. And I know some people just go absolutely bonkers for her things and I've never seen a tote bag by her before. And it is pretty. I mean, I get it. It is, it is very pretty. So that's something I'll probably be putting on eBay. Here are two pillowcases with some really fun little crocheted edges. There's one pink, one green and yellow. So those are really sweet for like a kid's room. Of course I have boys and my boys are crazy. These are, I think these are standard size pillowcases too. So that'd be good for like a twin bed. So my boys are crazy and I would never put such a nice pillowcase on their bed. So these will go also on, probably on Etsy. Yeah, these are one of the nicer things that I picked up too. I didn't see any holes and just very minimal, if any, staining on these. So I think those will clean up very nicely. I got two vintage aprons and I always pick these up when I see them for a good price. Now this one I did notice, see the edge down there? It is torn. I didn't notice that when I picked it up, which is too bad because this one's really cute. It's kind of a Kelly green check and it's got these little like cross stitch things on the pocket. It's really cute. So I wanted to sell this one to kind of help pay for this lot, but since it's so torn, I'm gonna end up keeping it because I certainly don't care if something's torn like that for myself, but I don't wanna sell something it wouldn't be worth it really to sell something because I'd have to sell it for very cheap. I feel like it's just sometimes it's worth more to me to keep the damaged things. <laughs> My collection is just going to be all damaged stuff at the end of the day is what it's going to come down to, but I really don't care. This one is more, I'm going to say like 70s, 80s because of the style, the shape of it. If I can get the top of it here. Here we go. It's a full, a full length like smock apron this is the top here and then it goes down the details and the print on this one to me looks more kind of 80s this one's pretty dirty too so i hope this one cleans up other than being dirty it's in good shape so we'll see what i end up doing with that one this would also make i think a good kids apron not a little little kid but you know a 10 year old or so because it's a little bit on the smaller side and it's it is like the full length one that goes all the way up to the chest so you know if kids are painting or something and you want more full coverage like a more like a smock that's a good one for that <laughs> somehow i decided to pick up a couple little baby clothes now this is definitely not something i ever even venture into at all but i started with this one because it's a little sailor suit it's just the top and it's Oh, so very stained. So we'll see what happens. It's got a button on it too. We'll see what happens when I soak it. But I don't know, at 50 cents, I figured, or however much I ended up paying, this is definitely more than 32 things. So I just thought, or 34 things, I can't math. Don't, don't make me math. But anyway, it was less than a dollar, less than 50 cents. I figured I would give it a go. If worse comes to worse, somebody could put it on a stuffed bear or something. And then this little linen dress. And I do not have girls, so maybe that's part of the reason why I picked this up. Just because it's dainty and sweet and pretty. I don't have a lot of pretty little girl things around here, so yeah. Next, we'll do this stack of, I don't know, tea towels maybe. This one's pretty stained, but it has really pretty butterflies on it. This one said Vera, so I picked that one up and I'll just use this one. I like this one. It's got the vegetables on it. I like Vera patterns. This is a linen one with some really vibrant yellow flowers. I thought that one was really pretty. This one's embroidered, as you can see. That's really pretty too. I think this is also linen. There you go. That one's in good shape too. Oh, this one was super fun. Got some cherries and like a yellow country sort of scene. This reminds me of Michelle, Comfy Cozy Living. It's kind of like her kitchen vibe. And this one, I think those are supposed to be rolling pins. What do you think? I think so. Like the rolling pins that have the little carvings on them. I think that's what that's supposed to look like. And then of course some nautical things because like I said, this house had a lot of nautical sort of stuff. So I got this one, I thought that was cute. And then these two, 
went together. It's like a coffee grinder and a tea kettle. Some staining on this one too. I'll soak those and see what happens. And then, I don't know, is this like a, just like a little dresser scarf? Very little one, but it's got this very nice sailboat ocean nautical scene on it. And here's another nautical thing. This was the one where when I was editing the video, I saw another one on the ground and I was like, dang it, could have had two because I feel like this was meant to be a napkin. That's just kind of the shape of it, but you could use it as a dresser scarf too. See, just lay that down on something. I think it's still pretty just as a one-off. And I don't know if this was supposed to be a hanky or what, but this one's pretty beat up, a lot of yellowing and well, actually, I think some of that yellowing is part of the pattern, but it still does have yellowing. And then it's got some holes in it right here. So because of the color and the damage, this one will probably be a keeper for me. See, my pile here is growing. This is what was happening while I was shopping too. It's like my box just kept filling up with linens. Let's slide all of these forward here. Okay, so then we got some doilies. There was a lot more of these. I don't know why I grabbed these particular ones, but I did. Oop, I just dropped one. We'll get that later. Oh, and then this one too. This one's gorgeous. Look at the yellowing on there, which I really like actually. And then the flowers, the colorfulness of the flowers. I think this is beautiful. Now, is this tatting? This might be tatting, but someone will have to help me and let me know because my great grandma tried to teach me how to do the lace tatting when I was probably 12 or 13 and it was so far over my head and she was getting really frustrated with me and she was like almost 100 years old. So <laughs> that didn't go so well, but I've seen her do it, but it was a long time ago. Anyway, I just like that one. And here's a bunch of pot holders. So these are all crocheted pot holders, which I very much love. Some of these will definitely end up in my own collection. Some of them I might lot together, groups of three or two and put them on Etsy, but they're just really fun. Some of them are stained and yellowed. This one's so cute. Look at how it's a sunflower. Isn't that cute? Ooh, I like that one. This one, this one's got a good yellow spot on there. And with pot holders, sometimes they're burn spots, so you can't really get them out. <laughs> Depends on what happens when you soak it, really. Here's a couple more. And here's two Christmas ones. And this is just full on, like, thick yarn crochet, like you would see in a afghan. But those are still fun. And then this, maybe it was meant to be like a washcloth. It's kind of an odd size, but it's got the crochet on the edges. And yeah, I think it is a washcloth. Some more random little things. Here's a little embroidered, well, I'm not sure what this is. Oh, and this has a tag too, so this is not old, or it's not handmade, made in China. So that was not an old thing. I wasn't looking closely. I was grabbing and tossing anything that looked cute. And there's that one. This looks like store-bought kind of thing too, because of the lace on the edge, but I'm not sure. But that's a nice little dresser scarf. Oh, what else? Scarves. This is very, lacy and pink and pretty. Here's another one. These are just pretties, pretty little hankies. This one's fun with the paisley, paisley pattern around the edges. This one is very sheer with some little embroidery on the edges. Very pretty. That's like a wedding hanky. Tulips, blue tulips. Yeah. Oh, here's Oh wait, did I, did I show this? Wait a minute, did I end up with two of them? Maybe I did get the one off the floor. <gasps> I did, so I do have two, yay. I do have two of them after all. I must've picked it up off the floor off camera and I just don't remember. Cool, and this one I really liked and it is, um, you know, stained. There's some funky stains on this one, but I just, I love the colors of this one, so I picked it up anyway. Hopefully it comes out. We'll see. And here's some little blue flowers with a pink edge. These are probably like good for mystery boxes. If I start doing mystery boxes, which I've been saying for a while, I'm gonna do mystery boxes, but 
I did Christmas mystery boxes at Christmas and that was super fun. I had a really good time doing that. So I've been wanting to do more. Here's a little, I don't know what, I guess it's a hanky, but it's got little crocheted edges here. And then the last handkerchief is this red one. That's a fun little pattern. And then the very last linens are these two little, probably napkins, I guess. Really cute colors. And it's got like a, uh, I don't know, Dutch. What is that? Maybe not, maybe that's British. Maybe that's like a British dude with a hat on. First I thought it was like a Dutch girl, but I think that looks like a male. He's got some pantaloons on and then the girl is next to him. So I don't know, but it's also got some fruit and a teapot and all those flowers, of course. So those are cute. And the colors are just interesting because it's like a kind of a coral pink, blue, green, and yellow. So I thought that was nice too. Okay. So, holy moly, haul over. <laughs> That's what I got at that estate sale. So, oh, and my total spend was like $54 or something like that. So I feel like I got a ton of stuff, especially these linens. I feel like I've spent $50 on less linens before around here, just because that's what it's like around here. <laughs> But we'll see which ones clean up nice and which ones are just kind of for scrap, for crafting and scrapping and whatever. So yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging in there. Hopefully this wasn't a, too frustrating of a video while I'm trying to learn how to use this camera. So I'll try to get more light in here next time too because it looks like it was a little dark. But I appreciate anybody who hung in there till the end, like always. <laughs> And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye, everyone. Bye.